him. Right now, it doesn't look like there's a need to praise God. But as you start out as an act of obedience, so it doesn't look like right now there's a need to praise God. But I'm just praising God as an act of obedience. I'm praising God in spite of what I'm going through. I'm praising God in spite of where I am. I'm praising God in spite of the things that I'm faced with. I'm praising God even though I'm not pregnant yet. I'm praising God even though the situation at home has not changed yet. So right now, the reason I'm praising is because God has given me an instruction to praise. It doesn't feel good praising, but I thank him anyway. In everything, give thanks. It's as simple as that. In everything, give thanks because this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. So even if I don't feel like it, because it's the will of God, I give him praise. Because it's an instruction from God, I give him praise. I give him praise and glory. And so tonight, you know, I just I just ate in my heart and I started to type praise party. And you would wonder what's there to thank God for. But as we yield to thank him, to give him praise, things will open up in our space. Things will open up in our space. So I give you praise for you are God. I give you praise because you are God. I give you praise because you are wonderful. I give you praise because you are holy. There is no reason to thank him, but I give him praise for who he is. I give him praise for he's a good father. One of the things that I my heart, you know, today, one of the things God laid on my heart concerning tonight, I'm so excited already. You know, God laid on my heart that sometimes we start to dance before the real dance happens. I want to say that again for someone. We start to dance before the real dance happens. I start to thank him before the reason comes. And that's why the scripture says that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So there is no reason to thank him. In fact, it looks in the environment that things are deepening. But remember the scripture that says that we do not look at things that are seen, but the things which are not seen, because the things that are seen are temporal. What does it mean to be temporal? It's subject to change. And at, at different times of our lives, in different seasons of our lives, God gives us different strategies. And the strategy for tonight is give me praise in spite of it. There are times that the strategy is stay in the word. There are times that the strategy is go on a fast. There are other times that the strategy is, um, you know, just stay quiet, meditating until you are full of the word. But tonight, the strategy is give me praise in spite of it. And so I start out and say, thank you, Father. In fact, it looks dry, but I stay there. I say, thank you, God. Thank you for where you brought me from. Thank you for where you're taking me to. You know, David could face Goliath be because he remembered where God brought him from. He said, when I faced the lion, God helped me. When I was faced with the bear, God helped me. And because he remembered where God brought him from, to Goliath was, was just as the lion, was just as the bear. And so in spite of what you're going through, you can square your shoulders up. As the Kaya had gotten a report, this time it was even a report from God, prepare your house, you're living this world. But Hezekiah faced the wall and said, only the living will praise you. And that's what I need you to focus on tonight.
Only the living will praise him. Only the living can praise him. I need you to get your friends on. Share the Zoom link with them. Tell them what we're also live on Facebook and Instagram. Someone needs to hear this word. Someone who is bowed and competing and saying, but I started together with my friend and now they have a duplex. She's got five children. She's traveling all around the nations of the world. Okay, maybe not traveling all around my cousin. What is happening? You know, but things are going on well for them. Just before you are quick to compare, remember where God brought you from. Remember that it saved you. Remember when you're faced, when you were faced to the world and it looked like this is going to be a disgrace. But God showed up for you. And when David was faced with Goliath, he was bold. He was confident in the God that he said. He was confident in the God that he had a relationship with. And this is it tonight. Your place of relationship, your place of fellowship, that's what will keep you in times where it looks like you're afraid to the world. And only the only thing that you can hold on to is what you heard from God, what you heard from God, what you heard from God. Oh, glory to God. And so tonight it might look like there's no reason to thank God, but I'm thanking God because of the instruction that I've received. In everything, give thanks. And in everything, mean in everything. In everything, mix exactly what it is. In everything, give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God for you. And so God is reminding us, dear daughter, give me thanks. Give me praise. And I wrote down some things that God just laid on my heart, you know, for tonight. It's not enough for us to say today, but to bless him. I will bless the Lord with my heart. In my mouth, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And when you say this, it's not like you're not faced with something, but it's a choice. Praise is a choice. Huh. Let me say that again and again so that someone else hears. Praise is a choice. I choose to praise him, regardless of what I'm faced with. And God doesn't want us locked in a form of strategy. That when I'm faced with something, the next thing to do is start fasting, is start praying. No, there are times that God says, don't lift a hand, I will handle it. There are times that God says, trust me, just stay in praise. And guess what? I, I'm, I'm looking for that scripture. And, and you know, as we stay in the place of praise, praise lightens you up. Praise takes off the burden. Praise helps you to hear clearly the next direction the next direction and while the devil wants your head bowed you thinking oh why is my life like this you're getting stuck on the things that have not happened he wants you to see the things that has not happened he wants you to focus on the things that are temporal Whereas God wants you to focus on his word. The word of God is true. The word of God is eternal. And God has integrity. God will stay by his word. God will stay by his word. Guess what? God has no reason to impress us. I always say to people, God means what it says. And God says what it means. Praise lightens you up. I wish there was someone on Facebook or Instagram who can put this up for me. Praise lightens you up. Praise gets you to that place where you can hear suddenly the body is lifted. Remember, you don't always have to feel like praising to get on praising. One of the things that, that, that you know the Lord just laid on my heart. Oh, glory to God. One of the things the Lord laid on my heart is the fact that you should dance before the dance. I want to say that to someone. You know, it looks like it doesn't make sense. Like maybe it's tautology. Maybe I didn't know what I was saying. No, but I heard it clearly. Dance before the dance. Dance before the dance. Praise before the praise. And it's normal. It seems natural. To wait for the miracle to happen before I prayed. After all, there's now a reason to praise. It seems natural to wait before for the miracle to happen before I dance. After, after all, 
That's the reasonable thing to do. But the strategy tonight is that as we engage in praise, I mean, God has different strategies for different battles. For tonight, God is saying, remember, the word God has given to us is that August is our month of testimony. August is our month of testimony. And this is the strategy. So when God gives us a word, it gives us a strategy. Because guess what? We are involved. It's partnership. It's partnership. Glory to God. It's partnership with God. It is partnership. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. It says, thanks be to God who has called us into fellowship. And I say, thanks be to God who has called us into participation, into companionship. And God doesn't want us to stay just loving on him. We should participate. And the way to participate, first of all, is as the word comes to you, I say to us every time on Glow Conference, when the word of God comes to you, what you should say, Father, I believe be unto me according to your words. That was what Mary said. It didn't make sense. How will an angel come and say you will get pregnant? You will give birth to a baby without the aid of a man. And the angel, in fact, performs the naming ceremony and says the name shall be called this. But Mary asks, how shall these things be? How is it possible? How is it possible that I don't have money for tuition in a Nigerian school, but the Lord is leading me to apply to a school in Canada? How? It doesn't make sense. How is it possible that I'm trusting God for just one baby and God starts to send me, starts to buy clothes for twins? How? How is it possible that I'm even just serving, trusting God for stipends from the government, yet God is saying, apply to that oil company? How is it possible? That God lays a project on my heart and I don't have a dime in my account, yet God says, go on. This month, the strategy is praise. For every word that you have received, whether it's a general word, when I, mean, when I say general word, I mean the word that you have received in God's word, or it's a specific word, maybe a dossier at the Lord, or maybe in the place of prayer or the study of the word, you know that word just came up in your heart and you knew this is my Rema word. For example, this is our month of testimony, the strategy, God always has a strategy for different battles. God always has a strategy for different realms. God always has a strategy for different seasons of our lives. And the strategy this month is praise. So it's praise party today. We are dancing before the dance. We are thanking them. If your ears are plugged, you know, maybe you're doing something in there. Maybe you need to just shake and just begin to practice it. The time to thank God is when the miracle is not. And guess what? Praise is a choice. That's the third thing or the fourth thing. Praise is a choice. Praise demonstrates your faith in God. Praise demonstrates that you believe in the word of God. Praise demonstrates that even if I have not received the answer, yet I believe. Yet I believe. Yet I believe. And sometimes it looks like it doesn't make sense to praise. But I start out praising because that's the instruction from God. That's the instruction from God in everything. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16. It says always be joyful. Always be joyful. There's no reason to be joyful right now, but I'm going to obey. I'm going to go ahead and be joyful because God has asked me to be. Always be joyful. Guess what? We joy, we draw waters from the realms of salvation, from the wells of salvation. We joy, we draw waters. The scripture is replete, you know, with several instances. When it didn't make sense to, to trust God. Praise is your trust in God's word. Is your faith in the integrity of God's word. And I hear the spirit of God say, I'm turning the tides around. I'm turning the tides around. Glory. 
Woo, glory to God. I'm turning the tides around. The Spirit of God says tonight, you might not see the wind. You might not see things turning in the physical. But if you dare to trust me, if you dare to praise before the miracle happens, you will see my hand at work. Oh, glory to God. You will see my hand at work. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let me go back to it. First Thessalonians chapter 6, chapter 5. Oh, glory to God. Verse 16. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. And where we're going. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, give thanks no matter what happens. Ah. Oh, glory. Give thanks. No matter what happens, God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. So I love the I love this translation. So it says in everything, give thanks. But this is what this translation and I have been. It says, give thanks no matter what happens. Give thanks. God wants you to thank him. The reason I give thanks is because God wants me. The reason I dance, even, if, even though it, things have not changed, is because God wants me to give thanks. And trusting in his love, Ananando Koloboshia, is thanking him because it said so. Not because of what I feel, but because he said so. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Give thanks no matter what. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. So the reason I thank him is because I believe. I believe that none shall be buried. I believe this morning, I was meditating on this scripture, you know, that says wealth and riches will be in the house of the righteous. And I started to meditate. You know, all through this week, I've been meditating on Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, which says that God is the one who gives us power to get wealth. I love the NRV. It says God is the one who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So I, I wake up every morning meditating. God is the one who gives me the ability to produce wealth. And then the scripture just came up in my heart. Wealth and riches are in the house of the godly. So it means that even if I'm not experiencing that abundance right now, I can begin to thank God and say, thank you, Father. Wealth and riches are in my house. Thank you, Father. Wealth and riches are in my house. Oh, glory to God in the eyes. So the reason we're thanking God is not because I'm waiting for the change, but because God says to thank him. Because God says to thank him. And so I give him praise. Because God says to thank him. And so I give him praise. So praise is a choice. You need to be intentional about it. And the devil is going to bring to you reasons. What's there to thank God about? But you need to choose, decide to praise. Decide to give him thanks and praise. So it is a choice. And praise is our strategy. Praise is our strategy this month. It's our month of testimony. But God has given us a strategy. It's praise. God has given us a strategy. And faith in the word of God is doing what it says to do part time. Doing what it says to do part time. And guess what? Next month, it might change the strategy. Next month, it might just tell you, you know, stay meditating on my word. But for this month, it's praise. And guess what? Because you have received this word now, the devil is going to go all out to look for ways to stop you from praising. That's why I said praise is a choice. 
You're going to make up your mind this month. I'm going to give God thanks. I'm going to dance before the dance. I'm going to dance expecting that I will dance. Allah Gandhi Devosia. Verse 19, 1 well, Thessalonians, that's our word for this morning, for, this, for tonight. It says, don't put out the Holy Spirit's fire. One of the ways to ensure that you stay in praise is to stay fired up in the Spirit. When you are fired up in the Spirit, nothing can quench your praise. I want to say that again to someone. When you are fired up in the Spirit, nothing can stop your praise. If you would be very truthful to yourself, you're going to find out that the times that you're finding it difficult to thank God at those times where you're low in your prayer life, at those times where you're not praying in tongues enough. But when you stay prayed up, especially in other tongues, that's why we have the Holy Ghost to help us. We are not alone on this journey. We are not alone on this journey. God is a good father. We are not alone on this journey. It's given us the Holy Ghost. And as you take time, and sometimes when it looks like it's all coming, it's all coming, it's all rushing at you, lock yourself in the room and say, I choose to praise. I choose to praise you. You're a good father. There's nothing to thank. It looks like there's nothing right now. But start from the word. Start from the word. Your word is true, God. And I thank you. You're a good father. You've brought me thus far. Thank you. Thank you for my childhood. Thank you for my growing up. Thank you. And you start to recount God's mercies. Sometimes just upon the Psalms. Yes, several places in the Psalms that will remind you of the faithfulness of God. David is a man of like passion. He was faced with battles. I mean real battles. Yet you will see some of his praise and you will wonder, how can someone be praising in the midst of this? Paul and Silas is a, is a classic example. I almost always use the situation of Paul and Silas, you know, in at our global conferences. And Paul and Silas were locked in the prison, not for a wrongdoing, not for stealing, not for armed robbery, not for anything bad, but because they witnessed the saving grace of God. They were locked in prison and they prayed and they gave thanks and the prison bands were loosed. What is it that you're faced with tonight? Only the living can praise God. Don't allow the devil bow your head and say it's not enough. God hasn't done enough. And some people get caught in the place in which they need God to prove himself to the God before they praise him. No, don't get in that trap where you need God to prove himself before you praise him. Sometimes just get on your face and say, I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I thank you because the answer is right in my spirit. Sometimes it looks like everything is all, it's all cloudy. It's all cloudy. But guess what? When it's cloudy, it means rain is coming. Oh, glory. That's the river for someone. Because when the cloud is full of rain, it empties itself. When the cloud is full, we feel become a For every glass, I don't have a glass here. For every glass. This is my water bottle. So I'm going to show you this. For this glass, when you look at it, when, when I put water up to half, you can either see half full or half empty. And a man that sees half full starts to thank God. Oh, thank you, Father. This water, I've got water. I have water to drink. I give you praise, Father. I thank you for this cup. I thank you for the water in it. But someone who sees half empty starts to complain. This water is empty. But it's the same thing. Just half of it. You need to start to thank God for even the, the container. 
Don't think of what is inside yet. Start to thank him for the container. That's you. You are God's building. Thank you, God. I'm wonderful. I'm fearfully made. I'm the apple of your eye. Thank you for how far you brought me. Thank you for where you're taking me from. Thank you because I'm not where I used to be. You might be dealing with an habit right now, but you're not where you used to be. And as you start to give him praise, the 16, I'm not even sure whether it's 56 or 7, it's just number. The 16 is as you start to give him praise, you are turning your attention away from the problem to God. And as you start to look on him, you would glow. That's what Glow Conference is about. That's what this community is about. We're a community of firebrand women. We're taking God's word to the nations, to the different boundaries. But you know, Glow Conference is that place where God cooks us, where God stares us, where God fires us up, where God gives us strategies for war, where God gives us strategies to take on the, the mountains of influence. And tonight, our strategy is praise. As and as you praise God, you're turning your attention away from the problem. That's where the devil wants you focused on the problem. It's not done. It's half empty. It's half empty. And then you start to see, oh, the cup is not even beautiful. The cup, I've had the cup for years. Be aware. You need to start to thank him. I even have a cup to start with. Praise is a choice. You need to be deliberate and say, I will praise him. Not because things have changed right now, but because the word says so. And as you start to act on the word, you are acting in obedience to God. You are acting in obedience to God. It says, give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. That's why he wants you to thank him. It means, you know, for me, that my thank in him is a demonstration of my belief in Christ. My thank in him is an act of faith that I believe his word, that I trust his word. Sometimes we're faced with challenges. We're faced through many things. This, this conference is for so many, maybe not just today, but so many who will watch, so many who will listen to this. And sometimes as you start to thank God, deliberately, sometimes just because God says to thank him, God takes you through that challenge. And then you look back and, and you just wonder, why was I even tense in the first place? We've gone through situations at different times. You know that you look back two years down the line and then you start to laugh at yourself. How come I was tense about this? But as we start to praise God deliberately, because his word says so, we turn on the light around us. We see. That's the seventh thing or the eighth thing. As you start to thank God, you're turning on the light. In your light, we see light. And when the light is turned on, your head is clear. You can hear clearly. You can see clearly. You know the next step to take. You know the next thing to do. You know the people to collaborate with. Guess what? How did you start? You started just because God says to thank you. Even when the situation didn't look like it. But you just started as an act of obedience. Glory to God. And as you start to thank him, the burdens will be lifted. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up right now, so I'm recapping. As you start to thank him, the burden is lifted. I want us to, you know, practice it tonight. As you start to thank him, you're lighting up. The burden is lifted. That's the first one. God wants us to dance before the dance. Praise him before the praise happens. 
Don't wait for the miracle, but start out as an act of obedience. God, because you said, give thanks, I give thanks. The third thing is praise is a choice, and praise is our strategy for every battle, for every, and, and it doesn't have to be a battle. God gives you a word and gives you a strategy to hold on to before the fulfillment of that word. So you may hear, you might be maybe on Zoom, on Facebook, or, or Instagram, wherever you're connected, and you're saying, my life is beautiful. I don't have any battle. I don't have any, but you have the word that you're holding on to. You have a word that has not been fulfilled yet. Because guess what? You might be doing well right now, but you're looking at the next level. Because there is always a next level. There is always a next level. And when God gives us a word, every time he gives us a strategy. And the, this month is our month of testimonies. And the strategy is praise. So praise lightens you up. So you can hear, so you can receive direction. God wants you to dance before the dance. Praise is our strategy this month. And the fourth thing I said, the third thing is praise is a choice. Is a choice. I choose to praise him. I choose to worship. I choose to honor. And then the fourth thing is praise demonstrates your trust in God. If you truly trust him, when he gives you that word, you start to thank him. Don't wait and say, perform the word yourself before I praise you. No, 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 no. When God releases a word, he is not Allah. God is not out to impress you. If he gave you that word, angels already were released to bring the word to pass but you have a part to play. And God always gives us a strategy. So praise demonstrates your, your trust in God. Praise demonstrates your faith in the integrity of God's word and the fact that you know that God's word will not fail. And we've looked at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. It says, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. So the reason I thank him is because I believe in Christ. I believe in Christ. I believe in Christ. The reason you gave your heart to Jesus, it says with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is, confession is made unto salvation. No one here was dead when Jesus died. We only heard and we believe. The same way as you hear God's word, believe and confess the same. I choose to trust you and I give you praise for this word. When the devil is after the word, oh, you just got a word. Let's see if it will come to pass saying praise. You're going to ask in your heart, what's the strategy, God? What's the answer this month? The strategy is praise. The strategy is praise. The strategy is praise. Decide to give God praise. Praise is the choice. The side to give him praise. It's praise participating. And I'm going to give the last 10 minutes. We're just going to practice it and just worship. And some of you, by the time we're wrapping up by 10 or 5 minutes to 10, you know, you're going to find that as you start to praise God, somehow, for every believer, there is a joy locked up inside of you. The devil wants you to focus on the things that have not been done, on your inadequacies, on your weaknesses. Oh, you're not good enough. Oh, see, the person you started out with, they've gone all far. Can this thing happen? You've received several words. Different people have laid hands on you. You're praying. There is no one else like you. Is it going to change in any way? You know, but you need to dare to trust them. Dare to trust him. So praise is a choice. Praise is your faith in the integrity of God's word. And guess what? The next verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse um, 19, it says, don't put out the Holy Spirit's fire. You need to stay praying in other tongues. As you stay praying in other tongues, if your prayer life is fired up, your praise life will be fired up. 
I want to say that again. That's the remember. If your prayer life is fired up, your praise life will be fired up. I want to go back to the point that the Spirit of God raised, laid, laid on my heart, that for every believer, for every Christian, there is joy locked up in your heart. It's somewhere there. It's somewhere there. But as you start to praise God, and another man got on another host, I just saw something in the spirit right now. Our praise, our joy, the joy locked inside you is an incense. So this is like a film. So there's a joy locked for those of you that use incense in your home. As you open up the incense, it starts to come out gradually until it fills the room. So for every believer, there is joy locked up somewhere in your spirit, somewhere in your spirit. As you start to praise God, the incense, you're beginning to release the joy. You're beginning to release the joy. That's another point. All of a sudden, you're going to find out that now you're joyful. You're wondering, wait, this, what's happening? I feel light. I feel different. So the, the devil, what does he want you to get in the praise? See all the things that we've listed that praise will do for you. So you need to fight for your praise. You need to fight for your praise. Daughter of Zion, you need to fight for your praise. There is joy locked up inside of you. And as you start to give God praise, maybe nothing has changed yet. But as you start to give him praise, just acting on his word, because God says in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. So I start out saying, thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my job. Thank you for the ministry. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your word does not fail. Thank you. So I start out like that, just as an act of obedience, because God says to thank him. You're going to find out all of a sudden you're joyful. Somehow you feel light. And then the joy is coming up from someone. Where is this coming from? And then sometimes you're going to ask, how come I'm so happy today? That's what your father wants you to do. And you're just going to find out there's joy in my spirit. There's joy. And when there's joy, with joy you draw waters. With joy you will see the answer. You will see the answer. You will see the answer. Ananamoko siya. I'm getting excited in my spirit right now. And as you start to, I just practice joy. And, and so you can stay there. Sometimes the praise, you're finding it difficult. It doesn't make sense to praise. You're faced with so much and you get to work. Your boss is not even, you know, helping matters. He's all cranky. He's all cranky. And then you get home and the children are doing this and doing that. But after you're done with them, just before you get, you, just before you get, you know, in bed, you just sit on the floor. You know, sometimes I just sit on the floor before my father, who, who's watching anyway. There's no, ah, yeah. And sometimes you just sit on the floor and you just say, God, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Sometimes you just that whisper. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe not for anything. Just stay there and just say thank you. Sometimes you may just lay on your back ready to sleep and you just say thank you. Yes, maybe today didn't go fine, but I thank you. Here am I. All of the living and praise him. And as you start to praise, you're going to find that joy. Just like the incense that you open up in your room or on the dining, that instance of joy will start releasing. All of a sudden, you're going to say you're going to sleep like a baby. And you're going to wake up light-headed, very fresh. And guess what? When you are fresh, you know the next thing to do. When you're faced with a situation and you've prayed and you've fasted, you've gotten to your community, you should have a community of people. I'm going to talk about that. I just had to wrap up. In this month, you need to be intentional about your friends. Don't get around moody people at all because you need to guard your joy. You need to guard your praise. Fight for your praise, I said it. If you have people who are always moody, 
Mm -mm. This is not the time to stay around them. This is the time to stay in a community of joy and the woman's glow. You have a group. You have a group. You have a group of people that you can connect with to pray. Monday to Sunday, we're always praying every day, depending on your mountain. And I know that your leaders, you know, the leaders start out with praise and things came on top. You want to get in the content of people who can praise God. And as you praise God, you're going to find that all of a sudden, I know what to do. I know what to do. Sometimes there is nothing spectacular about it. Nothing spectacular. No handwriting on the wall. No angel is calling your name. But all of a sudden, you know what to do. And someone is asking you, how do you know what to do? I can't explain, but I just know. I just know this is the next thing. I just know this. I, I just know my children should move their school. I just know that this is what should happen. Sometime this week, I, or I think it was last week, as I started to pray, one of the meetings that I had, I can't even remember if it was the Intercessor Network Prayer Conference or something. I just saw in the spirit a door locked and pastors were in front of that door. Angels are delivering testimonies in this moment. You don't want to get, you don't, you don't want angels to bring your testimony and you're wondering, that's the time you're complaining. God has not even done this. Period. This has not been done. No, 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 no. Let your angel catch you praising. Ah, yalabagadosha. Let your angel catch you praising. That's when you will know that the gift, you will know and descend that the gift is there. I want to go back to joy. I said that that's where God would have me wrap up tonight. Wow, it's nice to see one. <laughs> I said, I have preached myself happy to say. And so as you start to praise God, all of a sudden, that incense of joy, it's locked. Every believer has it. There's joy in your spirit. Your father did not create you to be moody. Guess what in heaven? You are a spirit. You have a soul and live in a body. Your real you is a spirit. And in heaven, where your base is, you know, we're just, we're just visitors here. In heaven, where your base is, he says there is rejoicing in heaven. Always. The angels are bowing down. And when they see a sign of God, they bow down again in worship. It is not moody in heaven. And when God created you, he put an incense there. There's joy in your spirit. There is joy in your spirit. And as you stay in praise, as you start to thank God, not because of what he has done, not because of what you want him to do. Sometimes people are saying, okay, let me thank God. Maybe I can bribe him with my praise. No, I just thank him because he's good. I just thank him because he's loving. I just thank him because he's faithful. I just thank him because of his love. And as, I, as we stay in the praise, as we stay in thanks, we see things start to open up in our space. Things start to open up in our space. Wherever you are right now, I need your, you know, your mics can still be on mute, but I need you to start to practice praising God. There is joy. There's some of you that you're trusting God for the next thing, but you need to start out by praising Him first. Start out by praising him first. And you're going to see, almost every day in prayer, all through this week, every time I hit my knees on the floor, I just hear open heavens, open heavens. The apostle has been delivered in this season. Babies released in this season. And it is not just babies, you know, physical babies. I mean, projects delivered with ease in this season. And the strategy is praise. God will always god will sometimes change his strategy but this month he's given us that these are months of testimonies and the strategy is praise let the angels of god always find you praising every time they're bringing a gift let them always find you praising as i wrap up I want to tell the things that i, I think I've, I've, I've talked about 10 things today let me go through it carefully um, quickly. Praise lightens you up. God meets you to dance before the dance. You need to praise God not because of what he has done, but, because, but as an obedience, as an act of obedience to his word. First Thessalonians 5, 7, 17 and 18, it says in everything, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Verse 19 says, don't put out the Holy Spirit fire. As you pray in the Spirit, often you're going to find yourself praising often. Verse 20 says, don't treat prophets.
spirit is as as if they are mouths. I love this scripture. It says, don't treat prophecies as if they are mouths to nothing. Some people have gotten to the point where prophecy really doesn't mean anything to them. As we've heard several. That's not you. Let every time God's word comes to you, let it be fresh and rejoice. Rejoice at God's word like one who has found a great spoil. Like one who has found a great spoil. So as you start to thank God, the burden is lifted. Praise demonstrates your trust in God. Praise is your faith in the integrity of God's word that God's word will not fail. And praise is the choice. You need to make up your mind. I'm going to praise him. No matter what comes my way, I remember that song now. The greater one lives inside of me. Mm. The greater one lives inside of me. That word just came alive in my spirit. When you're fired up praying in other tongues, you're going to find that your praise level is going to be high. I need you to always, just like thermometer is used to test the temperature of people, I need you to have your praise meter, whatever that means to you. You need to always check your praise level and show your praise, just like people will say, temperature shouldn't go above 37, you know, degrees that becomes abnormal, and show that your praise level doesn't go down. Praise is faith in God's word. And as you give God praise, as the 16th, you are turning your attention away from the problem to the solution. And the solution is in Jesus. As I begin to wrap up right now, as you start to thank God, you're turning on the light. All of a sudden, the light turns on. You know what to do. If a room was dark, and that's what complaint does to us, Complaint keeps us in a dark atmosphere because people feel that when they complain, I'm telling God how it feels. I'm telling God the way he's spending me. No. As you start to complain, you're going to find that things will get more gloomy. But as you start to praise, your cloud will be full of praise. And guess what will empty your testimonies? When the cloud is full of rain, it will empty itself. And as you start to thank God, just like someone who's in a dark room, you're going to turn on the light. You're going to turn on the light. You're going to turn on the light. And suddenly you're going to know what to do. I need you in the next one minute to practice this. Please just keep your mic on mute. But guess what? Just go ahead and press praise him. Not because of what is done, but because of who he is. You're faithful. You're loving. You're glorious. You're wonderful, God. You're faithful, faithful to your word, faithful to your promise. And I give you praise. I want to give an opportunity to someone who wants to give his heart to Jesus. You want to give your heart to Jesus. Maybe you're watching me from um, Facebook or Instagram or you're in here right now. You know, you want to give your heart to Jesus. This is where it starts from, where the heart man believes unto righteousness. Where the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What do I need to believe? Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe that Jesus died and arose on the third day for your sake. And tonight I want to invite you, if you don't know Jesus, He is Lord, He is Father, He is friend. He didn't have to die, but He died anyway. And tonight I want to invite you to make Him Lord over your life. If you have not accepted the love of Jesus, you want to say after me right now, as, I, as we wrap up the glow conference, just say after me, dear Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus died and he rose on the top day. And tonight, or this morning, or afternoon, wherever you are, say, I confess that Jesus is Lord over my life. I receive eternal life and I declare that I am born again. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. I belong to Jesus forever. He's Lord over my life in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, please send us a mail, the woman's glow at gmail.com. One of our leaders will get in touch with you. Someone will be there to pray with you and we want to welcome you properly to God's family. 
If you send a mail to the woman's door, you want to be part of our prayer. We pray Monday to Sunday, every day at 7 p.m., different prayer, um, different mountains pray. You know, 7 p.m. every day, you want to be part of a correct, did I just say that? <laughs> you want to be part of a wonderful family where you can learn God's word, where you can pray together, where you can praise together, where you can share your testimony because testimonies will help others to also stay in free. So send us a mail. Please put it in the chat. Someone help me on Instagram or Facebook. Send a mail to the woman's glow. One word, the woman's glow at gmail.com. And we will be glad to hear from you. Thank you for joining the Woman's Glow Conference today. Thank you so much for joining. And God's blessings rest on you. Please practice praising God.